What's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. Today we're gonna to talk about generators. We've never really talked about that. I don't know why, but we've been here seven years living off grid with no solar power and we do use a generator. I'm gonna give you guys a little brief history on how we got to these two generators, give you some information about them, and then I'm gonna tell you like some of our stories that we uh, had uh, having other types of generators here on the homestead. So yeah, we've used a generator now for seven years. Um, and we started off with some of the tried but true ones, right? Like ones you would get at the big box store. Uh, we got uh, one from Harbor Freight. It was a little green one. I forget what it was called. And um, we, so we've probably been through, like literally blown up, <laughs> probably three different generators. What happened was when we first got here, um, I looked at generators. Obviously, we don't have solar power and if you have solar power one of my sayings is behind every good man there's a woman and behind every good solar system there's a generator so if you're thinking about living off grid or homesteading or actually just any part of your life you should really invest in one of these uh, generators because if the power goes out if you live on the grid you probably have a freezer full of food an ice box full of food uh, maybe if it's the heat of summer you might want to run an air conditioner or fans and so these generators can do all that and it's definitely something that you want to look into and just have on standby now we have no association with honda they didn't give us the generators um, we bought them ourselves and all i'm doing is trying to share this information with you guys um, so you can make a good decision when you are out to purchase a generator so probably one of the biggest tips that i can give you if you're in the market for a generator is to get one with a low oil shutoff. What that means is, if you run your generator and it's low on oil, it'll actually just shut off. And that'll save you a lot of headaches. The first one or two pop, uh, yeah, actually all three of the ones that we had before we ended up with the Hondas did not have the low oil shutoff and I just ran them into the ground basically. It's totally my fault, I accept full responsibility, uh, but it's something that you should think about when you're getting a generator is a low oil shutoff. Next up is gonna be noise. Your typical generator is very, very loud. Um, we have had several, like I mentioned, and they were really loud so we don't run them that much but when we did it was like pretty annoying stacy was like oh my gosh how much longer do we have to have that generator on <laughs> so the one thing about the hondas that i really like and again they have no participation in this video i'm just sharing with you guys the information that we've gleaned over seven years is that they're super duper quiet as a matter of fact um you can run these generators and they're almost not even as loud as I'm speaking right now. Like the biggest generator that we have, the EU3000, it runs between 49 and 58 decibels. So if you guys Googled how loud that was, you would be super duper surprised. On It's not much louder than us speaking here to you in this camera. So that was a big game changer for us. Um, so when we did run it, we use it for tools, saws, um, stuff like that we don't like I said we don't really run it a lot but that noise level is huge so I could put it um, on the back side of the outdoor kitchen over here by the wood shack and you run a cord over here to the sawhorses and you you just you almost cannot even hear it which was a big difference from the other ones because they were super loud and I would be surprised if you looked at some of those decimals and they were in the like 70s and 80s uh, as far as noise goes. So here we basically have the two models. It's the 2000i and the 3000is. Now what the i means on these generators is that they are um, have an inverter in them so they're safe for your electronics. That was the other thing that we didn't do when we had the three previous generators is that they were just generators basically made for running um, saws and you know a compressor stuff like that but not your electronics like laptops, cell phones, and things like that. So they could actually fry your electronic devices that you use to communicate with. So that was a big thing that we learned, not that we had any problems with it, but doing more research on generators, when we finally made the buying decision to buy these, we learned that the I, the inverters inside of these, actually uh, help run your laptop and things like that uh, in a much smarter way. So what we did was we got the 2000 first. Um, we've had this one for a couple of years now, and we use this. It's very easy to carry around, 
um, and it puts out pretty good power. We can run the power saw um, and a few other things. It does get a little boggy at times, um, but it is a workhorse and it does pretty good. So because it got a little boggy sometimes, and I knew we had a lot of building projects going on, we saved up and got the EU3000IS. Um, and this is the Boss Hoss. Like this can run your house. So if you guys wanted a backup generator for your house in case storms came, um, I, actually I'm watching right now and there's a hurricane possibly coming into Hawaii, uh, which where is where our son lives. Um, but you'll, you know, Tornado Alley, um, Florida hurricanes. So there's lots of reasons why you should have one of these. Just general storms in general, they knock out power lines. And then you have your refrigerator and your freezers full of all that food and stuff that you've worked for in your garden and harvested and meat and everything like that. So it really is smart to have a, a generator um, at your disposable. You know, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So if you have, haven't looked into these or you haven't really gave it much thought, maybe that's something you can consider for your preps. But the EU3000IS is a workhorse. We use that for everything on the homestead, um, all the cutting and, and things we've done with all of our builds. It continues to just outperform and it's really quiet and it really gives us all the power that we can handle. Now on each one of these models, they have a uh, basically like a quiet or eco throttle. When you turn on the eco throttle, it'll actually um, cause the generator to run a little more quiet. So I'll give you an example of how that sounds. The EU3000, the 2000 has a pull cord on the side, which if I was um, to complain about one thing, it would be that because when you pull it, it actually rubs uh, because of the angle of the cord going into the machine here. It actually rubs on it. It causes your cords to wear out prematurely and it also bites a groove into the side there. Um, so that would be the definitely the only thing I would you know, have a complaint about for this little machine is the way that works. The EU3000 um, has a key start and a, here's the choke right here. Now it's on the eco mode right now and as you can tell it's not much louder than I'm speaking. So that is, I'm just telling you guys if you're looking at getting a generator that is a game changer especially for your neighbors or you. Now remember these are generators you don't want to run them in your house or in your garage make sure they're outside. Now I'm going to turn it on uh, off the eco mode so you can hear the difference in the sound. So there's just a little bit of difference in the sound. I think it's like roughly 10 to 12 decibels, um, but it really is no big deal. Now this the right here has a larger gas tank, obviously, than this one. Um, we could actually run this uh, generator here for about 24 hours on 3.4 gallons. And the smaller one here is about 15, 14 hours, something like that. Um, we really don't run them that long, but you can get that much time out of them. Um, and, you know, that lasts a long time when you're just using it for saws and cutting and maybe if you had to run it for a couple of days at your house while they fix the electricity at your place um, you're just talking about pennies on the dollar to keep everything in your fridge from spoiling um, so it really works well the other nice thing i like about them is that they're easy to get to as far as maintenance goes uh, to add oil on both of these units it's super simple uh, to flip the hatch add oil and again, it has the oil shut off, so when it's low on oil, it'll actually just turn off or it won't start, and then you just add oil. And always remember that with your generators, uh, general maintenance, you know, staying up on them, changing the oil, uh, checking the air filter, is really gonna give you a long life out of your generators. Now also with the EU3000, you get a pull start on it as well, so if the key or battery would fail you, um, you can pull start it just as easy. Now it's a little bit better set up uh, you know, versus the EU2000, but it's still kind of at a weird angle. So when you pull either one of them, you just want to make sure you pull it straight out. Now again, the little 2000 is kind of like a little suitcase or a carry-on. You can really maneuver this around, take it wherever you want to take it. We've taken it down to the pond to pump water out of the pond. I could take it up to the um, big barn if I need to take it up there. So it's very um, you know, portable. 
This one, on the other hand, they make them with some wheels, but I didn't want to spend the money for the wheels, but you could do that and get wheels for this too. But it weighs about a hundred and something pounds, almost uh, 150 uh, pounds. So it's got a little girth to it. It's a little heavier, um, but if you put it on your truck or something, you could take it wherever you needed to. So that's the only reason why we went with two of them. Uh, so we could have one that was a little more portable. And then when I build the building on top of the root cellar, I'm gonna build a spot for this in the back um, to where it can power some of the power tools and stuff that I'll be using inside the workshop. So hopefully you got a little information off of the video about generators. Like I said, the, the benefits, one of the things I struggled with was the cost. Like a lot of you guys, you know, we're, we're penny pinchers, we are budgeted and we have to spend money and it has to be intentional and it has to make sense. So when we were looking at generators in the beginning, it was like, you know, we wanted to almost go with the cheapest one and, you know, we, we're not going to run it that much. And, you know, that we kind of traded off all this nice performance and quietness um, for a less expensive price. But then it, what it turned out to be was we ended up buying three generators uh, to one Honda generator that we've got. <laughs> so it's that old adage, you get what you pay for. So, you know, it just kind of worked out that way. And, uh, you know, when you spend a little bit more money, uh, you get the oil shut off and you get the quieter motors. And, of course, Honda has a long reputation of being a leader in the industry as far as reliability and durability. Um, I'm a believer in their stuff. And, again, they don't have anything to do with this video. I'm just sharing with you guys our experiences so far um, with a power source on the homestead. Again, we mostly charge our phones and laptop and stuff like that with our car. We actually did a video a while ago about an inverter that we use uh, to power in the truck to power our laptop and stuff like that. So you can check that video out or find it if you'd like to. So again, we have nothing to do with Honda. Honda had nothing to do with this. We bought those with our own money. We saved up for them and they have been working great. So I just thought, man, I never have really talked about a generator or a power source for the homestead. And even if you have solar power, if you guys watch people with solar power on their homestead or off grid situation, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna hear videos where that generator is running in the background. There's just no getting around it. So do your homework, find the best generator that works for you. We can recommend these Hondas. We also are Amazon affiliates. So if you wanna use our link for anything that you purchase on Amazon, it helps us here on the homestead and we appreciate it. So as always, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We wanna thank you guys for stopping by, checking out the homestead, listening to my little talk on generators. And again, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. here on the homestead. And we hope you guys are enjoying these videos and you're getting these nuggets, these hashtag nuggets on these videos that we're posting. So you won't have to make the same. You won't have to buy three generators uh, before you finally get to one that works. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a Homestead Homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.